Hello guys and welcome back to Oxangel RC. Today I will be dealing with the last of the MyFly Dream videos for now and in particular the one about the new autopilot, the Crosshair. Sorry this took so long to be released but it is finally here so let's dive into it. This new autopilot has completely new hardware and firmware and in addition a color OSD. The functions and features are still being rolled out via firmware updates, but it surely seems to be a worthy successor to the previous model, boasting the same levels of simplicity of setup and installation and reliability of the code. Being an improved model, this one also supports auto landings, including the use of an ultrasonic or laser distance sensors to make those landings as precise as possible. This video was sent to me by my flight dream since I've not tested that feature yet and you can see just how well the autopilot deals with landings on pavement with a landing gear and that landing routine also includes spinning the props backwards to create reverse thrust thus stopping the plane even quicker. You can actually hear it in the video. This is wicked and is easily achieved with the use of Hobbywing's Flyfun ESCs which have the ability to reverse motor direction with the flick of a switch which in turn allows the autopilot to do that on its own as part of its landing routine. I have provided a link to the ESC in the description below for those interested in this feature. Now here is one landing without the landing gear just note how smooth it was using the laser distance sensor. This was at the end of a 200 km flight where the plane landed automatically on its own without a radio 200 km away from takeoff point. Pretty impressive stuff. And the good things don't end here. Knowing how my flight dream do stuff, probably setting all of this up is pretty easy and straightforward with the whole system being literally plug and play. In the box you get quite a lot of hardware which does give some flexibility in how to wire and install everything in your model depending on needs. In my case I did use the input output board which is perhaps the chunkiest solution requiring the most space but it also makes it much easier to arrange things and connect stuff without having to deal with a stack of 30 wires. One of the best things about this autopilot is that you get everything you would need with it and it all plugs together out of the box and even works. No need to solder, no need to cut or make wires and connectors, just plug everything up and go flying. It would be advisable to update the firmware to the latest version though, and there is an adapter for that, and the whole process is quite simple. Connect the adapter board to the correct port on the autopilot, plug in the USB cable, go in the folder where you've downloaded the firmware package from the MyFly Dream website, open the program, select the correct COM port, load in the firmware file, and just wait for the update to finish installing. At this point you might be wondering how exactly do you go about changing settings for instance or adjusting the PIDs and this is another area where this one varies a bit from the much more popular Arduino based autopilots. You do it via an OSD menu that you control with the radio sticks. Granted you do need to have the video system working for this or at the very least connect the video output from the autopilot to a monitor so you can see the OSD overlay, but it is a convenient way to do it, especially when you're out at the field. The autopilot can be connected to Mission Planner, but there are very limited settings you can actually adjust through that software, so I don't even bother doing it that way. Only useful thing in connecting it to Mission Planner is that you can use it to set up a waypoint mission, everything else can be done via the OSD menu. To get to the menu, there is a switch and stick sequence that must be observed. Both mode switches to low, throttle low, right stick down and to the right, hold it for a few seconds until the menu sign pops up on the OSD and then move the channel 5 switch to high to enter the menu. After that, you just navigate the menus by using the right stick. To make things even better, just in case you will be mounting this to any one of the MyFly Dream planes, there are settings presets that you can load for any of their frames and some third party ones and go straight to flying. Of course, you can always adjust those settings and fine tune them later on in case you don't like them, but it is quite awesome to know this option is there, which will essentially take out the guesswork of configuring this for a maiden flight and from personal experience I can tell you that they work well. 
from the other menus, you can set up and program pretty much everything else right there at the field without needing a computer or a smartphone, just your otherwise running FPV system. Some might ask, well, what if I don't have an FPV system? And to that, I'd reply, it's your problem, not mine. You're the one that's missing out on FPV, so go and get one right now. Now that that's settled, one more item that I would highly recommend to get and use alongside the MyFly Dream Autopilot is any of their antenna trackers. Those things are bloody miracle workers when it comes to increasing your video range and making sure those directional antennas are always pointed right at the plane. Not to mention the, again, seamless integration with everything MyFly Dream, which makes getting it to work so much easier and quicker, even for beginners. Only thing you have to do on the autopilot side of things would be to go into the menu and make sure the tracking data version is set to the correct option for the tracker you got. After that, it is just pure enjoyment to use this system. As luck would have it, along with the autopilot, I also got the mini crosswind plane and so naturally installed the crosshair in it. The place where I decided to put the autopilot did require it be mounted with the nose pointing back, so in the settings I had to go and change the orientation of the board accordingly. Like I already mentioned, use the input-output board instead of the other options just because it seemed like the cleanest solution, and I do like to have everything well laid out and labeled in front of my eyes so I can just plug stuff in rather than have to browse through numerous cables. Installation of all the components was pretty easy since, again, like already mentioned, they all have the appropriate connectors and wiring to just fit together, so it was a piece of cake unlike when I have to wire up a pixel hope from random parts or any other audio pilot compatible board. It is custom cables and soldering galore and I find that so tedious of a task. I enjoy it when it's finished but the process is just killing me slowly. Not softly, slowly. And here is one more interesting feature of this autopilot. It does have an auto takeoff mode and basically once you initiate it, you don't need a radio at hand to throw the plane. Basically flick the channel 6 switch a few times until you get the auto takeoff text on the screen and leave the switch in the middle position. Then throttle up above 60 or 70%. This will initiate the countdown for you to get into throwing position. This can be adjusted from the settings and it counts by moving the ailerons once every second. Once that time runs out, it will start moving them once every half second, at which point you shake the plane's tail up and down, the motors will throttle up and you can now throw the plane. I have to say, this process is quite enjoyable and more to the point, I took advantage of it on the maiden flight of this plane. Yes, first flight for the plane and the autopilot and I auto launched it just for the sake of it and it worked perfectly. Kinda had my trust in those mini crosswind presets for the autopilot and they did not fail me, although I doubt you can easily do something stupid enough to mess this up, just so long as you don't touch stuff you do not understand. But that pretty much goes for everything else. Once in the air, I was pretty happy how the plane flew with these presets, so just went ahead and flew around to get a good feel for it. It is funny how used I am to audio planes fly-by-wire A mode, which limits control angles and makes the plane feel very smooth and docile, but such a mode is missing here, so it just needs less input in the regular stabilized mode to get it to do what you want. One interesting peculiarity of this autopilot is that it does not require arming. You plug the battery in and servos and ESCs are armed and ready immediately, so keep that in mind. Care must be taken to make sure those motors don't spin up by accident. Most people will set up throttle cuts on the radio, might be a good idea, but I just can't be bothered with that since I've never ever done it. Ever since I started in this hobby. So, after an auto takeoff, you can tell the autopilot what to do once it reaches the predetermined altitude, but for the most part, I let it do a circle, where it would just do circles at the coordinates at which it reached that set altitude, until you take control of it, just to give me some time to get to my chair, sit down comfortably, adjust all the monitors, etc, and get ready for flying. In addition to that mode, you also have an altitude hold mode, which will also do course lock, after not touching the ailerons for a few seconds, and you can change the course direction using the rudder after that. 
There is also a manual mode and there are also waypoint and landing modes, none of which I've tried yet. I do have a mission loaded up to try the waypoints mode, but for some reason I just never got around to testing it and I'm still a bit unclear on how to activate that mode, but all in due time. On the topic of waypoints, one drawback of the system so far is that you can only set up no more than 20 waypoints, which is a huge bummer and definitely makes this quite unusable for proper mapping, but I have been assured that if people need more, there will be a firmware update to allow an unlimited number of waypoints so long as you have an SD card in the input-output board. Good news, although still a weird choice, but I assume this autopilot was not originally designed for mapping, just for FPV, so mapping and waypoints is not its primary focus, at least at this time. What I care about more is for the core functionality, keeping the plane in the air and returning it to home upon loss of signal, to work reliably. And if the first generation of the MyFly Dream Autopilot is any indication, it should do that quite well. In fact, on a few range tests for the AKK Dominator video transmitter and the Dragon Link radio system, I did get some loss of signal situations, flying behind trees etc at 30 kilometers away and 100 milliwatts radio transmitter power would do that that so I know return to land works well and reliably and thus point the plane correctly to home point. But back to the flight modes now, they are divided between the two switches channel 5 and channel 6 so you just put them in various positions to get the modes you require, it's not unlike mixing two switches for audio pilot to get more modes but in this case the mixing is all in the autopilot not in the radio. As already mentioned, one new improvement of the new crosshair over the old autopilot is the addition of the color OSD. Of course, if you do not want that, you can always switch that off and revert it back to the black and white one, but I think it is a nice touch as it does make a more noticeable separation between the critical and the not so critical information on the OSD overlay. Only situation when the colorful bits will not be that useful compared to the white ones would be when the video signal is very low and the image is barely visible. In that situation, the white text would have a higher contrast and will be more clearly seen than the green or red alternative, but nowadays very few people are pushing the limits on a daily basis, so the color thing would be more than okay for 99% of the flights. Not to mention that I generally do love how this OSD is set up and arranged without making the screen too busy, at least for me. In addition, the autopilot also has a telemetry output port, which you can wire to a telemetry radio or the TBS Crossfire or the Dragon Link system and hold that information down to the ground, where you can connect it to Mission Planner and have all of that flight data on your computer just in case you want that, and in some cases it can indeed be useful to have that extra connection there so you can see where your plane is for those long-range flights. Up to this point, I've only seen other people using the old MyFly Dream Autopilot and have rarely heard a complaint about it, but this is my first experience dealing and flying with a MyFly Dream Autopilot and I have to say, I am very pleased by the ease of setup and use of this thing and its plug and play format, saving you a lot of time and effort on making custom cables and getting some random components working together. Furthermore, auto takeoff has worked flawlessly since day one and the process is quite intuitive and simple. The flight controller does do a great job of stabilizing the plane in the air. The OSD is very well laid out, clear to read and all of the important bits are right there for you to see. Airspeed sensor works without any issues and without constant recalibration like it often happens on audio plane and why I never bothered to use an airspeed sensor there and judging from what I've seen from my flight dream videos, auto landing is also working pretty darn well using those laser range finders. True, this is not the best autopilot for mapping, at least not yet, but its core purpose is FPV, so not that big of a problem. It does well that which it was designed for, and this is the most important thing. I have a feeling that the crosshair will prove itself just as simple to use and as reliable as the old autopilot which in turn is good news for the end user. I will make sure to get the telemetry working via the Dragonlink system as well as test the waypoints functionality and perhaps at some point might get one of them range sensors and finally man up to do an auto landing just out of curiosity not that I really need that functionality at this point. 
Until then, links for all items shown and used can be found in the description below and buying literally anything through them would support this channel at no additional cost to you and you would have my eternal gratitude as this is my full-time job. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to say a big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful, please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to also hit that bell button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook. Happy and safe flying and I will see you in the next one.